This is Audio Link, which is a system for VR chat that syncs visuals on avatars or other objects with the music in real time in words that support it. Uh, so you can actually customize this to a huge extent. And what I'm going to teach you is how to create shaders that support this from scratch. And this is going to be a medium level complexity. You aren't going to have to do code, but it is a little complicated. If you want a much easier method uh, with less customizability, uh, just look at the alternate tutorials in the description. The Poyomi one is much easier. But let's get into this. Uh, first, let me show you how to um, download these things. Uh, the first thing is Shader Forge Audio Link, which is um, Shader Forge is how you make the shader, it's a node-based editor. It doesn't require any code. And this is the AudioLink version of it that I updated to be compatible with AudioLink. So if you go to code and download zip, you'll get uh, the entire project. You're only gonna need a piece of that. You have to unzip it first, since it's not a Unity package. And once that's done, I've already done it, but once that's done, you go into that folder, go into the Shader Forge folder, go into the Assets folder, and you're going to drag this into your Unity project under Assets. I'm not going to do it because I already did it. But, um, uh, and the other thing you're going to need to get, actually, this is optional, but you should probably do it because it's very useful. This is for testing. We're going to get the minimal version of audio link as a unity package and um, just download that and then click it and if you have unity open it'll import it I already have it so it's not going to import but um, that's for testing so let me show you how to set up testing uh, I'm going to make a new scene bring in um, my avatar put my material on it and let's see, we need the audio link avatar prefab that's under packages and under audio link under runtime. And there it is, make this a little bit you can see the audio link avatar prefab. And what you're going to need to do with that is add some audio to it. So I've downloaded, um, uh, Kevin McLeod song. I'm going to throw that in there. Any MP3 or any sound file whatsoever will work. Um, the more generic of a song, the easier it's going to be to test because you're going to be, the, the different sort of sounds in it are going to affect the shader in different ways. So you go to Audio Link Avatar in your scene, go down to Audio Link Input and click that to pick a song and you can always change that at any time and then we're going to click play it only works in the play mode so now we have to make the shader now that we're in the play mode we can create the shader and we can test the shader as we're creating it so to create the shader right click somewhere in your project click create create a shader i'm going to pick unlit shader and we'll give it a name. Oh, Blinko. Let me let me turn off the, the music. Um so we have this shader file. You click it, since you have Shader Forge, it's got this button that says replace with Shader Forge Shader. We're gonna click yes. This is gonna create a uh, an empty shader basically. And this is uh, the nodes that connect to uh, what you'll see on the object, on the shader. Uh, so we have to connect something to that. So I'm going to right click, go to properties, go to texture 2D. And now this is the usual texture input. So users can. Uh, when they're using your shader, 
pick whatever texture they want. Just as an example, I'm going to pick the one I have for this avatar, and I'm going to drag the RGB node over to the diffuse. Now this is going to place the texture on the object. Um, the diffuse is just the basic coloring of the object. Um, and just to make things convenient, I'm going to name it main text just like that. If you have that exact name, you can swap between shaders without having to reapply the textures. It's just a convenience thing. I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate that. And I'm going to give that a name for emission because I want to be able to add emission textures. Um, that's another thing where it's a convenient exact name. I'm going to select the emission texture I made earlier. This is just a preview for the preview and testing. You're, you'll be able to change these later on and as you usually would with a material. So I've just hooked it up to the emission output and that's things like uh, lights, uh, not technically lights, but things that are bright, things that show up even in the dark. So in the dark, you would only see these colors. You wouldn't see this stuff as we've set it up. But what about audio link? We've got to add audio link to this. So since you have the custom version of Shader Forge, you can right click, go to audio link and add an audio link. Now what this does is this will output all kinds of data, whatever it is you choose, but it has to be configured from this side. So I'm going to go to audio link. I right click, go to audio link and audio link preset. I'm going to hook that up. So now what this is outputting is how loud the bass is of the song that's currently playing. So if I hook up this to a mission, it's just going to blink. It's just going to blink um, whenever the bass is playing. Um, and I can switch this to upper mid. There's a few other options. There's a lot more options that Audio Link has, but you're going to have to get even more advanced for that. I'll put a link for that, but I'm not going to go into how to do that. Um, but let's see. We actually want to interact with this texture. We don't just want it to blink. So I'll show you how to do that. We're going to use a little math, so go into arithmetic, and we're going to add them together. Or, no, actually, I didn't want that. I'm going to delete that. I want to multiply them together. Because adding would just make it blink. But multiplying, because in this case, black is zero. If I multiply the red with audio link, and audio link's going to output a number, or in this case, it's going to output, I'll put a number between 0 and 1, which is like saying black or white, as you can see here, of how loud the bass is. So I'm going to multiply that with this, which some parts of this image are black. So you'll see that only the parts, only certain parts of it are going to blink now. And when I, and the bass is off, that's going to be off. It's the way you'd expect multiplication to work. And note that I only pulled the R here, so only the red parts of the image um, are being affected by this. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to copy this. I'm holding Alt to select multiple things, clicking and dragging with my mouse. I'm going to press Control D, and now I have that. I'm going to do that a few more times. So I can get the red, green, and blue on different bands. This is the band, by the way. It's just uh, a way of saying which pitches of the music are being uh, tracked. So if you can see what I'm trying to do, setting up so the greens are affected by this range of audio, the blues are affected by this range of audio, the upper mids. And I'm going to put those all together. So it's going to be different colors depending on 
what kind of sounds they're playing. So to put these together, you have to go to vector operations and append. That'll let you um, put individual things together. You'll notice that these lines only have one, and this is RGB. It has three values. It has three lines. So we're going to put these values together, and you'll see that it automatically assigns them to red, green, and blue. And putting that out, you'll see we have a more interesting shader. Because the blue shows up sometimes, the red shows up sometimes, and the green is not showing up. Oh, the green shows up sometimes. That's just a part of the song that didn't have much of that. Um, by the way, for these presets, you don't have to worry about these other outputs. Just using the red, green, or blue will all be the same. Um, I can go into a little bit now that we've got a working shader. You could, you could be done with the tutorial now and just drag... I think you can drag this, the shader onto your material and bam. Uh, make sure you drag it onto your avatar too if you haven't already. You can see that it's working. But I want to go the extra mile and show you an even more advanced way of doing this. Now I've used three of the four basic options. Treble is the highest notes, sort of like uh, when, when the snare hits. It's, it's not as often, so I want it to be a more intense effect. I'm going to add it to the shader. I'm going to make it so that all three play when the snare hits. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to add another audio link. And I'm actually going to manipulate these variables on the left that I'm putting into it instead of just using a preset. I'll start with a preset. There's a treble. But I'm also going to use the geometry data, UV coordinates of the object itself. And I have to alter these a bit. I'm going to add them together. So, how do I show this? Um, I show this on a cube. So that's the texture. If I just hook up the UV map to audio link, put that RGB in emission. And let me just hold Art, Alt, and right click to turn off the this okay this is the audio link shader uh sorry this is the audio link data this is how the program works so th this preset is just pulling the data from one uh sort of square on here and that's the the most recent base and as it moves off to the right that's just a timing thing used for effects so we're going to use the effects we're going to use one square high it's technically called a texel one texel high and the full width of the band depending on where the uv map is so um this preset is actually just a um an x and y coordinate of where on this to grab data so you can use color data some of these are uh very advanced um i'll, I'll provide a link to a, a uh, spreadsheet that explains each of these squares but um that's these are the reasons you'd want the, the red green or blue for some of these because some of them differ but we're just going to use down here right now to keep it kind of simple but let me go back to the way i had it before because i was just showing you the, uh, how that works so going back to this uh, I'm going to add the xy coordinates, which the x coordinate of this happens to be zero. And I'm going to add, uh, hmm, should I, uh, I had to think this through for a moment. There's so much you can do with this. 
I really encourage you to play around and experiment once you get the hang of it, uh, even before you get the hang of it, because let's just experiment and see what this does. Uh, oh, <laughs> it's not hooked up anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add together this effect and this effect. So it might be brighter. Uh, it might be too bright when it comes together, but let's try it. Whoops. So that's not really what I wanted. You should, um, speaking of too bright, um, adding together things. See, this is split into red, green, and blue, so the brightest it'll ever be is just a normal white of a value of 1, uh, which is sort of the brightest... It's not the brightest value, but it's the brightest value you can see. So if you go above one, uh, just theoretically, um, worlds that have bloom will be affected that by that. ArchGR and bloom effects will say, wow, this is a really bright object. We should add a lot of bloom around it. And this, if you walked into a world with bloom with this on, it, you would just be this massive bloom. No one would be able to see anything. So uh, because some of these have values of a lot greater than one. Uh, you wouldn't know that without trying it, but I did and had made that mistake. So I want to make sure I'm just getting this this bar, one of these bars down here, which I know aren't going to go above the value of one. We may get up to a value of two by adding these together when all the sounds are playing at once loudly. But hey, we can handle a little bit of bloom sometimes. That's a cool effect, so we want that effect. But let me just make sure I'm only getting the horizontal. The, the U, am I, am I getting this right? I think the U is horizontal and the V is vertical. Um, so I want the horizontal from this. And, uh, no, I want the horizontal from this and the vertical from that. So, Vector operations, component mask will split something. This is two values, x and y. It'll sp split it into uh, whichever ones you want. Uh, R and G are synonymous for x and y. They're just the first and second value. So I want the second value from here. I want the first value from here. And instead of an add, I'll delete that. And add a vector operation append like before um, and the first value and the second value oops I have this wrong first value and the second value what i'm trying to do here that makes it a little less confusing and we'll see i even got it right excellent and the nice thing about this right here being in play mode and testing it um is that you can see what you're doing, which really helps with experimentation. So, um, it's playing this treble across the whole thing, which I think is a neat effect. Might be a little too bright. I don't want to divide it. Hmm. I want I want it to flash a lot quicker and then be black. So I'm actually going to divide the horizontal value by uh, go to constant vectors. You can just put numbers in. Divide it by eight. Try that. That's good. Let me try sixteen. That's pretty cool. Uh, the only other thing I'm going to do is multiply it by the RGB of texture so that it's not all just white. You, you have this cool shimmer effect. That's cool. And one other thing I can show you, instead of a value, I could put in a property, and that would allow users to edit that and even animate it. It's slightly less efficient this way, but let's call it um, flash speed. 
can you can do that yeah okay you can put spaces in by default it'll be 16 and people can edit that um so here we go that's much more advanced way to do that i'll upload this project so you can look at it we're done i'm going to click compile it well it's already compiled look at this got all these effects we want um so take from this uh what you can and just experiment because it's not about doing exactly what i did it's about um it's about trying new things and experimenting and seeing the results right away with this system and making something interesting so enjoy